Good to see y'all here this morning. I missed you guys this week. I did. I missed everybody. Missed my bed, missed my chairs, missed my shower. We took one. Just You miss your own, when you got your own place, you miss it. And the older I get, I just, we take our camper trailer down. For the last two years, we've been doing that because sleeping in a dirty cabin with a bunch of smelly boys just isn't as much fun as it used to be. When I was one of the smelly boys, it was great, but it's just not that much fun anymore. But the, we had a great time this week and, and uh, heard some good messages. They had different different preacher every night, and that's, that's pretty good. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, we're getting really to the heart of what we've been dealing with as far as false things, false things. Um, 2 Corinthians 11, let's pick it up in verse 12. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion. Remember, that's, that's the setup for the next set of verses, is that this idea of occasion. These false teachers and the false apostles, they want, they want to be noticed. They want to be exalted and they want to be lifted up. They're full of pride. They're, full of pre- they're very presumptuous, the Bible says. And they want, they want a big following. They want a mega church. They want a lot of friends on Facebook. They want a lot of YouTube downloads. They want to be popular. They want to, they want to, uh, I've figured out, and I don't know if you figured this out. There's ways to get hits on YouTube. There's things that you can title your video to get people. It's called clickbait. You get baited into looking at this video and doesn't make any difference if the video is true or not. They got you to click on it. They got you to look at it for a while. And with revenue sharing, you can set up videos on YouTube to get part of the ad revenue that YouTube gets. And um, the, more video, the more videos that are watched, the more people that subscribe, the more you get paid. Um, I do not monetize my videos on YouTube, and I will not, um, simply because I don't want, I, number one, I don't want for me to, to start doing, or start having the motivation of bringing in money for making the videos. I, don't, I didn't say that quite right, but I don't want that to be my motivation, and I don't want people to see me that way. The Bible says a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. And a reputation is better than having money, as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, they want that occasion. They want to be popular. They want the downloads. They want the money that comes with it. And that's what they want. So he, he's, Paul is a, attempting to cut off occasion from those who desire occasion. That wherein they glory... They may be found even as we, for such are false apostles. They are wanting that notoriety. They want that fame. They want to be popular. I've discovered years ago, popular Christian, if it's popular, it's probably not Christian. And if it's Christian, real Christianity, it will not be popular. That's a very, you see it all through the Bible. It It is a narrow way that leads to life eternal and few there be that find it so if you have found the way to eternal life consider yourself blessed not lucky consider yourself blessed because god elected you for that now that's going to get into the heart of what i'm going to say this morning for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of christ and no marvel For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their work. So we've been dealing with 
things that are false. Last week we dealt with false Bibles, and I did not even get near done going through just the verse comparisons between the King James and other translations that, that show that they're not saying the same thing. They cannot be equal to one another. They're not saying the same thing. So this week, and I could, I could keep on going with where we left off last week, but I want to move on to this subject here. And I may spend a little bit more than one Sunday school lesson on this. Let's uh, open our Bibles to Galatians chapter 2. We're going to look in verse 3 is where we're going to start. 2 Corinthians, Galatians. So just a couple pages over. Galatians chapter 2, verse 3. <clears throat> but neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And I want you to notice verse 4. And that because of false brethren. So if I were to ask you the question, is it possible that in churches there are false Christians? Is it possible? Yes, you see it right here. Okay, false brethren. False brethren are not brethren. All right, they're not brethren. It would be like if... It would be like if Jeremy, uh, all of a sudden, somebody came to him... And they had oriental features. They spoke with a, a, uh, a, a Japanese um, accent. And they said, Jeremy, I'm your brother. And you would say, no, I don't think so. No, no, we have the same mother and father. And you'd go, no, I don't think so. Okay? I mean, it's obvious that those two men are not brothers, right? Okay, so, and let's say that your mom and dad were billionaires and we're going to leave the inheritance to the children and this guy shows up claiming he's your brother, okay? But he's not. And it's obvious that he's not. DNA doesn't lie. It's just like God's word, right? DNA does, it's like the guy, a couple years ago, we, I filmed that rally for that boy at Hillsborough High School who put a dress and a wig on and said, I'm a girl. So I get to go in the girl's bathroom, girl's locker room, okay? He can try to convince everybody that he's a girl, but his DNA speaks the truth. His DNA says he's male. He was born that way, all right? Born a male. That's what his DNA says. So it's obvious that he's not, or I could use the comparison, this guy came to you with a dress and a wig on and said, Jeremy, I'm your sister. The DNA doesn't lie, right? It's, it's known. So that is a comical version of what I'm talking about. A false brother, an imposter, posing as a true disciple, but he's not, okay? Uh, just off the top of your head, can you name someone in the Bible that you think qualifies as a false brother? It's exactly what I was thinking of just now. You and I are on the same, we must be brothers, twin brothers, me and Cubby, okay? Um, Judas was a false brother, a false convert. Jesus knew that. Jesus was not fooled by him. He was chosen for that specific reason. All right? It, it fulfilled the will of God for Judas to be chosen, to be numbered among the disciples, the Bible says. He was numbered among the twelve. But it was even written of in the Old Testament that he was going to betray Christ. It was in the Psalms that he was going to betray Christ. Um, and that somebody else, uh, uh, Peter mentioned that in Acts chapter 2, was quoting the Psalms where it says, let another take his office. And so it was obvious that Judas was a false brother. He was never really converted. He was never really, truly born again. So... Let's look at the context here, Galatians. Paul's dealing with men that bring in works 
type salvation. In other words, you must follow the law. You must keep the law. You must be circumcised. You must follow the Torah, in other words. And Paul referred to them as false brethren. He says in verse 4, Galatians 2, and that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, they snuck in. Jude says that these men crept in. Creeps. Creeping things like snakes. They slithered their way in. They never announced who they were and what their intentions were. They'll never do that. We're never going to have a guy come in this church, announce that he is not a true Christian, and that his intention is to convert most of our church over to Buddhism or anything like that. Nobody's ever going to do that. They're going to come in and pretend that they are one of us, but they're not, all right? False brethren unawares brought in who came in privily, secretly, to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. These false brethren always want to know your business. They want to put their nose in your business. They want to inject themselves into your life because according to them, you're not really right with God. You have to follow their teachings, follow their commandments, do what they tell you to do, or you're not really saved, and they are going to come in secretly and privily. It's been done. It's been done by, I knew a guy I went to Bible college with. He was set up by a man that belonged to the churches of Christ. Uh, these are the ones that believe you must be baptized in their baptistry in order to be saved. Uh, I knew a pastor that he was in the thick of charismatic country out there in Oklahoma. And he was uh, building a new church, and uh, like a missionary church. And um, he found out that there was a guy in that church that was just waiting for the, for the right moment to pounce upon the people that this pastor was bringing into his church to try to get them to start speaking in tongues in that church. And he found out about it and run the guy out. He was a, he was a false convert coming in to subvert the teachings of that pastor and so these guys they came in to spy out the liberty so they could bring everybody in the churches there in the gaul area they could bring them back under the bondage of mount sinai that's what they were trying to do there's two covenants in your bible the old and the new the old was given to israel at mount sinai that's the law that's if you keep all Ten Commandments, you can, you can have the promised land. The New Covenant is, you didn't keep the commandments, you're not ever going to keep the commandments, but if you trust the one who did, you can go to heaven, the real promised land. That's, they want to bring everybody under the Mount Sinai Covenant and say, you must keep, yes, Christ died for your sins, blah, 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 but you've got to keep the covenant, you've got to keep the Torah, you've got to be circumcised, you've got to keep the feast. You got to keep the dietary laws. You got to do all this. And if you're not doing, why aren't you doing that? Why are you, why are you doing this over here? Why don't you have Passover? Why don't you have uh, Feast of Tabernacles? Why don't you do all these things that are? They, and they always they come in privily. There are people who sit around and do nothing but get involved in Facebook groups so they can subvert the people in those groups. I don't understand that. Uh, number one. Why aren't those people working all day long? And they're, they should be too tired at the end of the day to, to do stuff like that. But they sit around all day long on Facebook and subvert groups in Facebook. We have a group on Facebook that meets. It's the official Bethel Church, Pastor Mike Hoggard Watchman Ministry. I don't know the title's about that long, but anyway, it's a group. And it's run by a group of men that are admins and they keep their eye out because we've had people join the group, try to subvert the people in that group. And I treat that page, that group on Facebook like I would anybody here. I would not put up with somebody coming in that if I found out they were here to subvert, they would not stay here long. They just, it, I just won't put up with it. So we've had that happen before. But that's what people do. They feel like they have the only truth. And according, I don't, if you've got the truth, why not just 
make a big page and say, here's the truth, you need to believe this. Why do you think you have to get inside other people's business and start subverting in a way that makes you look like a snake, a serpent? Why, do you, why don't you just proclaim the truth like John the Baptist, like the apostles in the scriptures, and just take whoever follows that? Why do you think you have to get involved in other people's groups, other people's business, get in people, other people's churches to try to pull converts out into your own way. It's because they desire occasion. They want that following, and they'll stop at nothing to get it. So, uh, back in Galatians. Paul said, verse 5, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour. Paul saying, we did not, we did not allow them to speak. We did not put up with them. Once we found out who they were, we put a stop to it right then and there. We did not give place by subjection, not even for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Paul, in practically every letter that he writes, is a champion for the gospel. And he's serious about it, and he will not put up with anybody trying to subvert the gospel of Jesus Christ. The whole thing, the, this whole chapter of 2 Corinthians 11 starts out with him warning about another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. And then he ends up with teaching about the false apostles. And now here he is in Galatians doing the same thing. He said, I'm going to, I'm going to preserve the gospel. Verse 6, but of these who seem to be somewhat, they are, they're the, the somewhat. They like to be uh, revered as the, they like to have doctor in front of their name. Dr. Michael Hoggard. Medical, not a medical doctor, doctor of theology. Okay? I've been offered that. I've been offered that. And I, I've turned it down twice. And don't ever intend it be an honorary title, but I don't want it. I want nothing to do with it. Because as soon as you stick doctor on the front of somebody's name, that automatically, in most people's eyes, places them ahead or on top of everybody else. That's not where I want to be. That's not a good place for me to be. I know me, and it's not a good place for me to be. I like being down here with everybody else, okay? And so when they start putting doctor on people's names, that just kind of tells me right there that they like occasion. And so, but, but of those who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me, God accepteth no man's what? Person. God is no respecter of persons. Doesn't matter if you're doctor this or just regular layman Joe. It doesn't matter. God accepts no man's person. He does not accept this world's status. He does not accept um, the degrees or the titles or what bloodline you came from or what bloodline you didn't come from. That doesn't matter to God. God sees every one of us the same. We're all made out of the same dirt. We all come from Adam. We all come from Eve. We're all poor, wretched wicked, hell-deserving sinners that God saved by His grace alone. And without Christ, we are nothing. And so even after we're saved, there are not those who rise above everybody else in Christianity. I don't believe in that. Because in heaven, everybody is the same. It's all one land. For one people who have one father. Are we not all brethren? Amen? If Jesus is the firstborn among us, then he gets the preeminence and none of us get any kind of preeminence after that. It's Jesus. He's the head brother of all of us brethren. And I like it that way. I do not do well. In situations where I think people think that they're better than me. I do not do well in that. Okay? I went to a Bible college for five months. And that's what it was. 
I found out that that was the place where all the big wigs of the denomination put their children and where all the people who had a lot of money put their children and they were all there to get their sons married to their daughters so that they could have these connections inside the denomination and I didn't fit in I didn't like that Mike that did not set well with so I when I quit I got married to Lisa and I didn't go back and want anything to do with it but he said but of these who seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were it maketh no matter to me God accepteth no man's person for they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me just because they say they're doctor so and so that doesn't mean that they're gonna know something more than everybody else knows doesn't mean that because the best thing that you can get from God is always by revelation and God it doesn't matter who you are God can speak to you and you and you and you and you and you as equally as he speaks to me or anybody else for that matter we read the same Bible same Bible you might like one part of the Bible and I, I like another and I'm I'm kind of good with this section of the Bible not so good with that section of the Bible you might like that part of the Bible and you're pretty good at knowing that whatever and Paul makes the analogy of us being part of the body we're all part of the body and we're all connected together okay when the body when the head moves the body and the body moves is there any part of the body that's left behind no when the head moves the whole body moves wherever the head goes that's where the body goes and it doesn't matter if you're the little toe on the other foot I'm right-handed so it'd be my left foot if you're the little toe on the other foot you're still in the same place connected to the same head as the people right in here it doesn't matter who you are God does not accept persons amen and you know me you know my my big thing is you're just as likely to receive inspiration from God's Word as I or anybody else for that matter does it matter does it matter that I spend my day studying the Bible you may study it when you get home or you may study it first thing in the morning but you just you can't study it all day because you got to work you got things to do but God can show you something that I may never see in the Word of God and I have people all the time sending me stuff pastor we think you already know this but look at this and I'll go no I didn't know that that's pretty cool and that's just somebody who just believes God's Word and they read it and the Holy Ghost gave them something and they shared it with me and I'm just going man that's pretty cool I've looked at that verse a million times never saw that so that's me that's how I think it ought to be amen and I don't like the somewhat's I don't like those who desire occasion I don't really care much for those who want to be who want to have big titles in front of their name I just don't deal well with that crowd okay but that's who they are they always want that occasion but the false brethren let's deal with that you mentioned Judas Iscariot obviously he was a false brethren turn to Mark chapter 4 false brethren will follow false apostles they'll read false Bibles they'll follow false dreams and visions everything false that we've touched on in the Sunday school lessons are connected together I'm I made I told God years ago God I'm not interested in believing lies I, that's not what I want I want to know the truth I want to believe the truth I want to see it from your word I don't want to follow anything that's not true I'm not saying that I'm perfect at it I'm just saying that the desire of my heart is I don't want to be lied to and I don't want to believe a lie and I don't want to teach a lie so I, I try to be careful with things that I say because it's a big responsibility but when you have false brethren here's here's how they're made mark chapter 4 is the parable of the seed and the sower the first group the seed goes out to are the wayside and the fowls of the air the devil comes out and consumes the word immediately those are people who are perpetually lost 
They don't go to church. They, the Word of God has zero effect on them, not even for a time. And that's just your average American citizen driving up down the streets on Sunday, have no desire for church, the house of God, nothing, the Word of God, they have no desire for it. You try to witness to them, just water off a duck's back, it means nothing to them. But then you have two other groups that are in church. They are false brethren. The sower, in verse 14, Mark chapter 4, the sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. When they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Now verse 16. Here is group one of false brethren. These are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. Who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And have no root in themselves. So, it could be said that true brethren are the ones that are rooted and grounded. They're rooted and grounded. In other words, when a dry season comes, and it does, we all go through dry seasons. We, when we got down to Arkansas, as soon as we crossed the state line, on all their highway signs, there are no burn notices because they've not had hardly any rain this year. And I'm not kidding you, it was, everything here is still green. Down there, it is dead brown already. And this is just June. It's just very, very dry down there. Okay, so they're going through a dry season. How is it that trees are kept alive during dry times like this. They're rooted. When you get rooted and grounded in love, the Bible says, when you get rooted and grounded, the dry times will come. You're going to last. You're going to make it. Because your, your taproot is deep. And you're reaching down into areas where others are going to fall away because they're not rooted. Now, in this particular case here, there's a reason why they're not rooted. They're not rooted because they're stubborn. Hardness of heart, stony ground church people. They have, they have a hardness of heart. They get something is said, something is preached, something is taught, and it offends them. And they decided that, yes, they believe part of the Bible, but they don't believe the rest of it for one reason or another. They're just not going to believe it. And God is a God of everything. It's either all of it or none of it. That's, that's just how I see God. God says, believe the word, believe all of it. Can you keep nine commandments, still go to heaven? No, you break one, you're not going. If a man offends the law in one point, the Bible says he's guilty of all. Uh, the test for a prophet, if he's wrong one time, if he says a hundred things that are right, and he says one thing that's wrong, he's a false prophet. He's not to be listened to. You're not to be afraid of him. And so everything about God speaks to this idea that you either believe all the Bible or you just, you don't believe it. You cannot call God a liar in, in one thing that he says. So stony ground people are church people. They are church people. But they are false brethren. Okay? The, this group here in Galatians. And I've seen this out of the Hebrew Roots churches. <clears throat> the Hebrew Roots churches will have a doctrinal statement that says, Yes, we believe that salvation is by grace through faith. Well, that sounds good. But then they throw in the Torah and Torah keeping and law keeping as part of that. And saying if you don't keep the law, you're not saved. Well, which is it? Is it by grace through faith or is it by works? Because you can't have both. But they, they make it sound like you have to have both. You, gotta, you, you can be saved by grace through faith, but you also must keep the law. And if you're not keeping the law, then obviously you're not saved. They can't, they're trying to tie those two things together. They have a hard, stubborn heart when it comes to keeping the law. And they're not bending. They're not changing. They're not, they're not yielding to the, the scriptures. 
They are false brethren because they're teaching damnable heresies, teaching lies and hypocrisies, all right? So that's the first group. They, they have no root in themselves, verse 17, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And nine times out of ten, they'll drop out. But there are cases where they don't leave church. They just run the pastor off. There's a church. I had a friend of mine in the ministry take this church to be their pastor, and he was warned. It's a church down in Arkansas, and there's a man that owns the church. And I don't mean he owns the property. He owns the church. It's in, it, it, everything about that church, organization, property, building, everything is in his name. And he uses that. That's his little moneymaker. And there ain't but about 15 or 20 people in this church. And any pastor that goes down there they usually last about a year, maybe a year and a half. And then he runs them off because he don't like what they say. And this friend of mine, he was warned about taking this church. Man, don't do it. Don't do it. You're not going to stay there. I would, not, I would not sell my house. I would not go down there. But if you do, don't unpack most of your stuff. And he was down there about a year, year and a half, something like that. And they threw him out. This man is a false brother. And that preacher sounds good until he hits on something that that man's guilty of. And when that man hears that, he has a big meeting, he throws that man, he throws that preacher out because he's got the power to do it because everything's in his name. He can't be outvoted. So he'll throw a pastor out, bring in some other guy. And that's, that's just his, that's how he does things, okay? So sometimes they don't leave the church. They just run all the good Christians out of it, and the pastor. And I, I could tell you story after story after story after story. We've all seen this, we've heard it. So a lot of times, these people, these false brethren, they'll get out, and they won't come back. But then sometimes they stay and then they run everybody else out. Okay? I'm just telling you, it, it happens both ways. So that's your first group. And then verse 18. These are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches. What does that sound like to you? Deceitfulness of riches related to churches. What does that sound like to you? TBN preachers, Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, mega churches. It's all about the money. And they, they make no bones about it. It's all about the money. The gospel is related to your income. And if you're still poor, you don't have the real gospel. The real gospel, according to them, will make you rich. And if you're not rich, obviously you're not saved. And it's just how they see it. And they pump everybody full of these promises that are not, they're not designed that way. God doesn't say to everybody that gets saved, I'm going to make you wealthy. It doesn't work. It's not true. The only people getting wealthy and filthy rich are the, are the guys who are spouting this ignorance, this stupidity, and they're buying new jets okay, for themselves. And, uh, but anyway, that's just part of that crowd. Deceitful of riches and lust of other things. Cares of this world. They're very worldly people. What did I hear? We heard from somebody. I'm not done. Somebody at camp told us about a church, a mega church, where the, the pastor did like a theme, a sermon theme, and they decorated the stage with like a beach, and his wife come out in a bikini on the stage 
and had some of the women in the church dressed in their bikinis on the stage while he's quote-unquote preaching. That's a false brother. We're not identical twins. We do not have the same father. We do not have the same mother. Okay? Their mother is the mother of harlots and abominations. And all you got to do is look, look at the fruit. Okay? But I'm just, that's that crowd. That's that type of, they're very worldly. They have the cares of this world. They have the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things. They are not changing. They do not, listen. What I preached last Sunday, there's a difference in those who want to be different and want to change and want God to deliver them from their lust and those who wallow in their lust, say nothing about it, say God, God made me this way or God wants me to be this way or there's nothing wrong with this. That's two different types of people. You may, you may have an issue dealing with lust in your life, okay? I understand that. You want to be different. God, in time, will make those changes in your life. These people, and I'm not pointing out anybody on this side of the church, I'm just saying, these people over here don't want to be different. When that pastor paraded his wife out in her bikini, that's not people saying, God, forgive us for doing this. We don't want to, we don't want to do this, but we, we just can't help it. That's... They don't want to be different. They want to be lascivious. They want to be lustful. They want to be filthy. That's what they want. That's two different types of people. I'm on the side of anybody who wants to be clean in their life and they're struggling with it. I'm on their side every time. But the people who want to wallow in it, I want nothing to do with them. Amen? That's your false brethren. That's your, we are not, we do not have the same father. We do not have the same mother. He, heaven above is our mother. It's the mother of us all. And she's holy. She's clean. Their mother is a whore, a filthy whore. And as the mother is, so are the daughters. That's Ezekiel, by the way. Heavenly Father, give us discernment. Give us understanding. God forbid that any of us be false brethren. God forbid it. God, you chastise us, you chasten us, you, you make us clean. God, you just deliver us from the filth and the nastiness of this world. Deliver us, Father, from our sins. Deliver us, Father, from our pride. God, help us, dear God, to never be offended at your word, but to receive it with gladness and humbleness and lowliness of mind. Father, just help us, dear God. Give us discernment in these last days. We need it. There's a lot of things going on. God, give us discernment, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen.